for the rest of this chapter, I'll share how I tame specific technology to ensure it makes my life paradise on Earth. Even if you love what I do, don't just willy-nilly adopt my habits. Remember to make sure your technology is serving you before you touch it. Efficiently using technology that isn't getting you what you want is just streamlining ickiness. Conquer your computer. Computers sparkle, glow, and give us political news. They add little to our lives in a deep sense, but give us the illusion of engaging with life without the inconvenience of actual muscular movement. All it takes is a 14-pound bag of M&Ms, an intravenous drip of Coca-Cola, and some microwave popcorn, and we might never have to leave our desk. Your computer likes your undivided attention. When I think of the years spent in front of a computer rather than out in the real world, I want to weep. I get so depressed, I visit websites on overcoming depression. Then I play violent video games to express my rage at all those wasted years. Before long, there I am, in front of my computer, ignoring the fact that my life sucks because I'm sitting in front of my computer. I'm nothing if not consistent. I'm sure that your relationship with technology is healthier than mine. You use your computer as little as possible, only to get essential tasks done, and then you get up and engage in healthy, face-to-face -face interaction with people. No? If not, it's time to reconnect with your computer, but only in a healthy way. Rather than making her the center of your work or home life, use your computer as a tool. A really fun, useful tool, but a tool nevertheless. You get tools out when you need them, and put them away when you're done. And you don't use them for random stuff. You use your jackhammer to break up concrete, and then you use your mixer to make a protein shake. You don't try to make the shake using the jackhammer. Or if you do, it only takes a single try to realize what a really bad idea that is. Some relationships improve with a little bit of breathing. You'll get much more done and love your computer much more if you spend some time apart. Most offices are designed so that when we sit down, we are at our computer. Change that. Move your computer physically away from the center of your desk. If sitting at your desk means automatically facing your monitor, you'll get snagged. If you put your computer across the room, using it requires conscious thought. Next, schedule your computer time. When you think you need a computer, don't use it right away. Keep a paper list of what you need to do during your computer time. For example, the list might contain several items. Return Bob's email, upload the draft of the web page, read the report that Sandy sent, spend 15 minutes on my favorite news site to catch up on the world. Keep your tasks distinct and specific with defined endpoints. If your task is surf the web, add a time limit so you know when you're done. Now, you know your computer schedule, get up, Walk to the computer and do one task. When you finish, stand up and step away from the computer. Get something to drink. Remind yourself the task is done. Put the tool down. Then come back, do the next task, and so on. You can also use an egg timer or stopwatch to remind you to step away. You might find this trial separation turns your computer from an involuntary lifestyle choice to a genuine productivity tool.